Converting an image into black and white is as easy as clicking one button, but does that make it a good black and white conversion? Probably not. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you some techniques and processes that we can use inside of Luminar AI to really bring out the most in your black and white editing. Anthony Turnham here back with another photo editing tutorial in Luminar AI and a lot of you have been asking me about black and white and black and white conversion so that's what we're going to be looking at today. In this example we'll be working on turning a portrait black and white and bringing out the most in that but the tools, techniques and just the methodology of creating a really impactful black and white that's going to be applicable to any photography genre. So follow along and if you feel like it leave me a little comment just to let me know you're watching. Cool, let's get into it. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Guys, I really hope you enjoy this video because I recorded the whole thing only to discover that I hadn't actually pressed record. So here we go again. This is take two for me. We are opening this photo here to work on with our model. We are looking at converting to black and white. So the first thing we're going to do is come into the edit section and jump into the essentials tab. So the most basic way that you can do a black and white conversion is just to come down to black and white and click convert to black and white. And there you have an amazing black and white. No, no you don't. It's washed out, it doesn't really have any pop, any real contrast, it's not dynamic in any way, and as a viewer, I am not excited looking at this. Well, maybe a little, but in terms of a black and white, this is not a good conversion. So let's see what we can do to improve this. The first thing we need to do is just understand what is important when we're creating a dynamic and impactful black and white, something that's gonna hold our viewers' attention. When we're dealing with black and white, all we have to play with is the luminosity, the brightness values in the photo, and science tells us that the human eye will go to the brightest part of the photograph. And so anything that's important to us, we want to make that brighter. Our eye will also go to areas of more contrast. So anything we want to attract the viewer's eye to, we want that to be nice and contrasty. And by contrast to that, anything where we don't want the viewer to look, we want that to be darker, dimmed down. We don't want as much contrast variance as well. So these are all things we need to bear in mind when we're crafting our black and white. So one of the first things that we have at our disposal for controlling the black and white are these luminant sliders. So if I grab the red and the yellow and take those to the left, we're decreasing the brightness, the luminance of the, the skin basically, because that's where her skin tone resides in those reds and yellows. So if I push them to the right, we're brightening her up. And that's what we kind of want. She's the important part of the photo. So let's brighten those up. At the same time, if we take the blues to the left, her dungarees get darker. So we can actually introduce a nice bit of contrast between her skin and the dungarees by dropping that down. I won't take it too far because we still want to keep a little bit of interest and detail in those shadows. If we turn that off, you can see that in the tin shed behind, there's quite a lot of cyan. So if we control the cyans and darken that down, if I wiggle that, you will actually see we are definitely affecting that tin in the background. If we drop it to the left, that's darkened that down and already she's starting to pop out a lot more. And some people may say, I'm happy with that black and white conversion, but not people like you and me. We want a little bit more from our photo. So what can we do? Well, I always like to dive into Enhance AI and grab the Accent AI slider and just have a little play with that and just see what we can do with that. Just tickling in a little bit of that often helps a lot of photos, color or black and white. If we come into the light section, we've got access to smart contrast, and that's going to be really helpful for a black and white. When you bear in mind the fact that we are dealing purely with the tonality of black and white, we want to control that contrast. So if I push that to the right, I really like what it's doing for our model, but I just find it's introducing too much contrast to the background and taking our eye to other areas like this right half of the frame where we don't really want it to go. But I'm not gonna worry too much about that because I'm gonna deal to those areas later. So my approach is I like to get my subject looking great and then I can tone back areas of less importance. In any black and white, what I like to do is have a pure white point. So if I start pushing that to the right, you can see that our histogram reflects as I push the white further up. We're pushing our whites to pure white. And the same with the blacks, we're pretty much at pure black already here in the histogram. But I'll just drop that down a little further. 
and now we're getting a very very contrasty image so I'm going to bring the highlights back down just to protect those slightly and I might also boost the shadows up just to bring a little detail into those darker areas somewhere around there is good so currently I feel like our model's looking pretty good but we're far too bright on this pillar here this is one of the reasons I chose this photograph to demonstrate because you're going to get areas where the brightness that you've applied affects areas that you don't really want people focusing on so there's a couple of ways we could deal with that one way might be to jump into the pro section here and use dodge and burn and actually burn down or darken this post so we could just click and start painting and darken that down you could do the same over the hay here but I'm not a big fan of this method because I don't feel like I've got too much control with that. So I'm just going to click this arrow to reset that and we'll look at a much better way to deal with that. Let's jump into local masking and add a basic layer. Now here we have a lot more control. I'm going to look at the background, this pillar, all of this area and forget about our model for a moment. And I'm just going to reduce the brightness and the contrast. I'm going to reduce the highlights perhaps even bring the shadows down slightly and I could reduce the structure so we're blurring things slightly and I might do that just slightly not nothing too much and perhaps even bring the exposure down even further and the highlights too and now we've pretty much got two layers going on we've got the original photo that we edited where the model is looking great but we had too much contrast in the background and now we have this layer this local mask that's sitting on top of it which is basically reducing contrast and darkening the image down so all we need to do is create a mask to reveal our model so let's click and start painting on our model we can use the bracket keys to bring the size of that brush down slightly and we just want to make sure that she's nice and bright and if we feel like that transition is too strong between her and the background what we can do is make sure that the opacity is quite low somewhere around that 20 percent mark and we can just paint a little bit of a wider edge around her just so that it feathers that effect off and now we've got a more natural believable transition and that darkened down area if we feel like we want to reintroduce that anywhere on her or maybe even this hay here we can paint it back in so i'll grab my brush and I feel like her leg is actually a little bit bright so I'll just paint over that just ever so slightly maybe just dab the brush once there and now over the hay here again because I feel like that is actually a little too bright as well and now with that level of contrast on our model the fact that we've toned down the background our eye goes exactly where we want it to in the photo and that is a much better black and white conversion so if we compare the edit that we've just done against a black and white conversion where you've merely clicked that convert to black and white button. I think you'll agree that by bearing those principles in mind of controlling the luminosity and the brightness of the photo, how much contrast you introduce into certain areas, you are able to create a black and white photo that's just so much better than simply clicking that button. Now I'm going to copy that edit that we just made and paste that onto these photos down here and just see how that looks. Now the problem you have with copying any edit you've made where you've included a local adjustment mask, you're probably going to have to change that mask depending on the photo. So that's applied the template, that effect we've just done pretty well, but that's working just because the model happens to be in the same position on the photo as our previous edit. And this one's looking pretty good too. But if you want to change that mask, what we can do is come into the edit section, come back into that mask where it's darkening down the edges, and we can just make sure that we're erasing that effect off of our model. Take it off her legs here, off of her arm a little bit, make sure that her head's nice and clean there. And if we want to introduce it over more of this hay, we can do that as well by painting that effect back in. So in this video, we've covered the basic principles of converting to black and white. But if you'd like to see how I've created this black and white conversion, which is a completely different style, more of a low key muted look, or potentially taking this photo to a more high key look in black and white, just simply write more please in the comments below. And if I get enough comments requesting it, I'll put a video together on those two edits as well.
Well guys, I really hope that editing tutorial on converting to black and white has been helpful for you. If it has, please leave me a comment below. And more importantly than that, do me a favor, don't just click that convert to black and white and think you're done. There's so much more to crafting an impactful and powerful black and white image. If for whatever reason you don't have Luminar AI yet, firstly, why are you watching the video? It's not much help to you. But if you are gonna get it, I have a link in the description below and also a discount code, which is at sky10, and that will save you some money at the checkout. Not only does it save you some money, but I also get a small commission as well, which just helps me keep creating free content for you guys. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. If you haven't subscribed already, consider doing that if you have enjoyed the video. If you've enjoyed the video, give me a like, all that good stuff, that'd be awesome. Oh, too long sat in front of the computer today. I've gone crazy.